So I got a limited amount of time today, but I thought I'd go over a subject which irritates me uh, quite a bit, and that's uh, uninformed kids being political figureheads. Um, I'm reminded of it because uh, I don't know how you, you're supposed to pronounce like Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg. I'm, I fucking don't know. It's European nonsense. Um, but <laughs> she's trending again, and this time there are a significant amount of people against her. Why? Because she's baselessly sticking her nose in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And <laughs> her, her, her comments, you know, don't have any backing whatsoever, right? She's just coming in to say it so that she can say she said it. It's very virtue signally. And she had to <laughs> come in later and say, to be crystal clear, I am not against Israel or Palestine. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, I am against any form of violence or oppression from anyone or any part. anyone or any part of what of of one of the any ones so like their liver what are we talking here and again it's devastating to follow the developments in Israel and Palestine that's the most political answer that was written by a staffer she said I don't know what to do and she texted somebody and they said that she should say that I'm against violence or oppression from anyone or any part. And again, it's devastating to follow the developments in Israel and Palestine. Needless to say, no, it's not needless to say. When you appear to be taking a side, it's not needless to say that you don't support the violence of either or that you maybe shouldn't be talking about these subjects to begin with. Uh, I saw a reply that really, like, crystallizes um, the, the sentiment I think I have about this, which is this, this awesome person who came in to say that basically she's... Let, let me see if I can find this. Uh, I don't mean this as a dunk, but I, I want to make this point. Oh, shit. I fucking... I moved to the wrong part of the video. Now I've got... Okay. I don't mean this as a dunk, but I want to make this point. Greta Thunberg is a public figure parroting imperialist talking points known to millions of people with the backing of multi-billion dollar corporations and some of the largest NGOs on Earth. She's not above criticism. Oh, I, I, he's got another tweet here. It's very good, right? Um, so... <laughs> Uh, I just want to be clear, Greta's an adult now, and you can't say that I'm picking on kids anymore, but I've been, you know, sort of saying that these kids should stay out of it for a significant period of time. Um, like, maybe some activism is good, but making them thought leaders when their brains aren't fully developed, which is a point I will get back to, uh, is fucking stupid. And the only reason that they do it is to start the indoctrination process young by giving kids these people to look up to whether or not they make sense. Because then these people will consider everything they say to be, you know, some element of gospel. Well, Greta's the brave soul who bravely braved her way to the top of Brave Mountain. And now I can do whatever she does and I'll be con considered brave too. You know, it's, it's, it's real sick shit. Uh, he says, this is why they use a teenager to represent their interests. She's an NGO mascot and a scushion in one. Through, Gre through Greta, they push the myth of overpopulation in the <laughs> global south, which is a term, by the way, that I think is very good. Um, attack China and Latin America and position the same nations ruining the planet as its only saviors. Fucking... Bravo. Shit yeah. 
Like, that's exactly it. Because, remember, the state and its corporate tentacles, they're the biggest polluters. They're always going to be the biggest polluters because they have the most power to get away with it and because they make a shit ton of money doing it. And these are the people who hire people like Greta to mouth off about it on stage. So, make no mistake, Greta isn't some sort of, like, host of intelligence and paragon of truth. She's a talking head for organizations. And what's really funny is that you can scroll down on Greta's timeline a bit, and you can find that she's retweeting Amnesty International. Amnesty International! Let's see what they have to say about the Israeli-Palestine conflict, and see if they give it equal weight, Greta. Like, there's that old saying, I can't remember who said it, but you can't be neutral on a moving train. Like, <laughs> you're both sides in this situation. Like, this is one of the flaws of the equality sort of doctrine. Uh, she wants to claim that she's equally opposed to both when they're violent. Um, but they're not both equally violent. And one has a huge amount of money and arms and support from the international community, and one doesn't. And, and, and you know, it's, it's pretty sick that people get to ignore all that and still get political attaboys. It's fucking hilarious. You know, but it's also sick. And, you know, it's the David Hoggs who push every town in gun control now uh, while the corpses are still fresh whenever there's a tragedy, right? It's these people who immediately assume that it's some white dude who's a Republican. It's these people who assume that this has to fit my political agenda. Because, like, they've been indoctrinated, right? David Hogg, like, <laughs> he claims to be a survivor, right? Um, but what about everybody else's opinion? There are plenty of survivors of tragedy who disagree with him especially people who have come back from mass killings in the form of, like, real mass killings, not just four people or more, like the FBI calls them, but mass killings as in genocides, who say that, you know, they kind of disarmed some folks in order to get started on some of this shit. Maybe we shouldn't do that again. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, we've got all these kids speaking for for the general corporate agenda got a skype message uh the general corporate agenda um and and it's pretty it's pretty telling who they lift up and who they don't like that nick sandman guy who everybody jumped down his throat with zero evidence philly d liberal like justifying ideology spokesperson for YouTube, uh, had <laughs> the most vile things to say about this kid uh, in a video he took in his backyard, I think it was, or something. Um, I don't know. I don't remember exactly how that went. I know that the, I know that his like apology video was very informal too, uh, like or whatever he did. It was like an apology video or an apology tweet. Either way, he like took it back. He backtracked when everybody pointed out that, like, he he took, like, these few seconds of footage, didn't understand the full context of the situation, and still went with it anyway. But that kid, that kid gets to be brutalized by everybody. The celebrities who threatened him are still on Twitter. Um, but people like, you know, Greta get to be public spokespeople. People like David Hogg. No matter what reckless and irresponsible establishmentarian jargon trash they spew. Um, and to be clear, there, there's an example of how this can turn very wrong. And that is, for those of you who don't know, I do have some young listeners. I'm not sure what the percentage is. Maybe I should look at my fucking uh, stats or whatever. But maybe some young listeners wouldn't have known about this, but there's a Naira testimony, which was a false testimony given before the United States Congressional Human Rights Caucus on October 10th, 1990, by a 15-year-old girl 
who provided only her first name, Naira. The testimony was widely, this is on Wikipedia, widely publicized and was cited numerous times by the U.S. Senators and Pre President George H.W. Bush and their rationale to back Kuwait in the Gulf War. It was revealed that Naira's last name was Al-Sabah and that she was the daughter of Saud Al-Sabah, the Kuwaiti ambassador to the U.S., Furthermore, it was revealed that her testimony was organized as part of the Citizens for a Free Kuwait Public Relations Campaign, which was run by the American public relations firm Hill & Knowlton for the Kuwaiti government. Following this, Al Sabah's testimony has come to be regarded as a classic example of modern atrocity propaganda. Not convinced? You know, I, I just... I, I can't t tell you how many times some kid prostrated in front of the masses and and uh, this is treated as serious politics um i in my video about the pledge of allegiance i made uh, my my normal point about this which normally gets me a significant amount of flack and that point is that children can't consent to giving up their future to a national identity they can't consent to empire they can't ex they can't consent to your your rulership they can't consent to the future that you are prescribing for them not not like giving them a choice you're forcing this on them uh they can't consent because they don't have developed brains they can't consent because they don't fully understand so they're <laughs> they're incapable of informed consent and uninformed consent is no consent at all so, why, oh why, would we hold these people up as the paragons of virtue when, like, people don't even let them go places they want to on their own? Why is Greta, who ditched school, uh, like, to sit down with a sign, but not actually prove she understands the sign, why is she considered a paragon of virtue? She shouldn't be. She should be a kid. Maybe people can smile at her and, you know, and, and say that she's, like, trying to be a rebel and she's trying to, like, feel her oats and, like, actually understand, like, what it's like to, to, to stand up for something. But to say that she understands what she's standing up for, she proves time and time again she doesn't. I mean, every, everybody in the media fucking eats her shit when she says something that, like, they can label the precocious little girl saying and agree with. Um, if she came out with any sort of policy that, uh, that they didn't agree with, she would need to stop talking because she's too young, and she's making a young, dumb mistake by disagreeing with the establishment. But that's particularly it. It's all the establishment. Greta is not moving against anyone. Uh, she's not proving she understands these things. She's a spokesperson. You know, she gave, she gave that famous or infamous whatever speech where she says, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you, Greta? How dare the establishment that puts you in front of a camera to be emotional rather than deliver any salient points or policy prescriptions? I mean, if you're going to leave that up to the adults, then maybe leave the marketing up to the adults as well so that it doesn't short-circuit the parts of people's brains that are rational and say, we have to protect this kid at all costs. Well, no, we don't. She's fine. She'll be fine. She doesn't need our protection, our support, or our help. And these kids don't either. If they do, it's because their parents aren't doing their jobs. And to be clear, their parents aren't doing their jobs. Like, this society was fucked up by their policies, and how dare you is a valid question. But it's asking the question for the wrong reasons, and because of that, it will always arrive at the wrong conclusions. The government, the state, is the single greatest polluter. It is the single greatest evil. Collectively, it's responsible for a huge amount of murder, oppression, brutality, 
psychological damage. The collective consciousness and body are both scarred, and the knives still remain bloody to this day, not even having been cleaned for a second before plunging in again. And this is the thing we get. We get justifying ideology, liberalism, and the typical bullshit that spews from imperialist mouths because it's said by a child, or, in this case, somebody that the public grew up to know as a child and who is now an adult public speaker, who is still being treated like a child. Funny how that works. It's almost like Hollywood. It's almost like the U.S. government built child stars that people could grow up with and then said, these are our mouthpieces now. But those mouthpieces are, as the economist said, on a leash. And don't you ever forget that they're not rebels. They're a part of the machine. Anyway... This was sponsored by Opsec Drip. Feel free to check them out. Um, also, if I'm pointing on library, um, that's <laughs> primarily because uh, the YouTube things are automatically synced there and I first upload them to library. Um, so feel free to follow me on library because if everyone who watched these watched these on library either to or instead... Um, I could actually, you know, get some support from that. It pays you to watch, and it pays me when you do. So feel free to set up a verified account on Library and watch my content there. But uh, this is sponsored by Opsec Drip. 240 glorious pixels of Shemog-born libertarian news in bite size that you can listen to in between uh, work hours. You can listen to on your way home. Uh, he wants to make everything very accessible, so feel free to check that, that out and subscribe to my channel as well if you like this fucking clusterfuck I call content. Be well all, smash the state.